craziest thing about the the Gaddafi thing, and I mean that's the craziest thing. But he had totally waved the white flag to America, abandoned his nuclear program, gave up all his chemical weapons. Like was like right after nine eleven, he was like, "Look, I'll help you in any in any way I can." Like, I don't want this, and I know America's coming to kick some ass around here. Right. And he did all that, and then they still went in and did that to him. So it was a message to, like, everybody else who we oppose around the world that, like, yo, you cannot, uh, you, you can't trust America, you can't work out a deal with America, and all, you know, when, when Joe Biden says things like, you know, like he's said several times that, uh, you know, we want regime change in Russia— it's like, that's what regime change looks like. So that's what Vladimir Putin's thinking when he yeah. says that. It's like, that's what you'd like. And then, by the way, according to uh, uh, Bill Perry, uh, who was Bill Clinton's secretary of state, so he says that, um, he, he said that Vladimir Putin believes that the U.S. has um, uh, like a, a program to attempt to assassinate him, that like we're actively trying to kill him. And I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. But he said that's what Putin believes in. I wouldn't be surprised if that were true. Um, Doesn't sound like it's outside of the realm of possibility. Yeah. It and seems like they tried it with Castro how many times? Yeah, many, many times. And with Saddam Hussein and with a lot of others, it's kind of our MO. And so, like, you got to, like, almost see, like, that's what their concern is, is, like, that they could end up like that. Right. Like, and what would you do to avoid ending up anally raped with a knife to death? <sighs> A yeah, lot, you a know, lot. like whatever you yeah. could. Um, yeah, you're really backing someone into a corner. Yep. Especially a superpower with nuclear weapons, especially if they can prove that you're actually involved in all this shit that he's saying you're involved with. Ooh. Yep, yep. Not good, not good. Oh, it's so gross. It's so scary. And, and you know, that's the one thing I'll say. Uh, the thing Trump said and I remember you were talking about this with Duncan too, but when Trump said that I want the dying to stop, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, somehow that's controversial. <laughs> like, but the the we should do you want pro Ukraine war? to win this war? Yeah, like what? And I was like, what does it even mean? Either it's like, what right. do you you know? And then there'll be people who are like arguing, like, well, we can't the war can't stop until all of the territory is restored because we can never like reward the aggressor in this conflict. And you're like, dude, like, so people got to keep dying because. You have a point to make about Crimea being ruled by Kiev rather there's than a, Moscow. There's also people that were like applauding that Progrosian was closing in on Moscow. Yes. Like, do you think that he's better? Well, the, do, I, you, yeah. do you know what he does? Yeah. Do you know what he was the head of? Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the idea that let's say after all of this, let's say Russia, like what seems to be the, the best case scenario that the establishment is claiming. So let's say... Russia is utterly humiliated in Ukraine. There's a devastating victory for Ukraine. Ukraine uh, takes back all of the territory. It's all of it. They get Crimea back. You know, they're just they get the entire uh, territory back, and then Vladimir Putin is overthrown. So, do you think that in this most like humiliating of moments for Russia, and knowing the like the political realities in Russia? What would you say is more likely that will rise up in Vladimir Putin's place? Will it be a, a Jeffersonian Republican liberal who now says we're going to institute a Bill of Rights, you know, or something like that? <laughs> or do you think it's more likely going to be probably some someone substantially to the right of Vladimir Putin who will be even more of an authoritarian? You know, like it's like it's kind of obvious which one is more likely. And uh, that never seems to be anything we think about when it comes to war unless they believe they could do what they did in ukraine well what to, to overthrow the government and put a government in that's more friendly to them yeah i mean they've they've tried to do this before that was the other thing that you were talking about that recording where they were openly discussing the various individuals yeah there's was i was it the john Kerry one or that the one with isis in syria or the one in ukraine with a victoria in ukraine newland. yeah the victoria yeah. newland phone call where she's uh she's talking about the the phone call it's with victoria newland and uh jeffrey pyatt uh, and it was uh it was leaked uh presumably by the russians but we don't really know um in uh in early 2014 and it's right around i think it was leaked like it was right around when, right when Yanukovych fled and the new government took over and was immediately recognized by the U.S. Um, 
and uh, she's she. It starts with uh, her and Jeffrey Pyatt, who's an ambassador, and he's they're like, uh, we're in play. Okay, like it's happening. And then they're all like she's talking about who should be in the new government and who should be out of the new government. Um, and then they're talking about how we're going to make this thing stick. Oh, this guy doesn't have the experience. Yats has to be in. Klitschko has to be out, like going through all the people and all the players who should be in the new government and who shouldn't. Um, and then she says that Joe Biden's going to call. Uh, call them to give him an attaboy to like congratulate him for doing it and you know the whole th- and look there are people who argue and I've heard this argument I don't think there's really any evidence for it but people argue that, that she wasn't talking about overthrowing Yanukovych she was talking about making a deal with Yanukovych or something but I'll just say this the one of the top neocons was over meddling in this country and all the people who she wanted in government got in and all the people who she wanted out of government got out that's a coincidence, so it works. and you know, yeah, you get you can't. And this is draw uh, conclusions. Yeah. So by the way, she is Robert Kagan. This is his, she's his wife, Victoria Newland, and she he was the guy who like I believe he was the founder of the Project for a New American Century. He was at least one of the signatures, uh, like one of the signatures of it. But he like he was like head neocon guy, and this is his wife. This is and their whole project since the 90s was to remake the Middle East, fight multiple wars, overthrow Saddam Hussein. Also, they want a regime change in Iran. They haven't gotten that one yet. And they wanted to expand NATO all the way to Ukraine. And that was their whole like mission. And so his wife just happens to be over there. She's handing out water and food to the protesters. She's in the crowd, gi- giving out uh, food and cookies to the, to the protesters. John McCain's going over there speaking with neo-Nazi groups and shit, telling them your fight's our fight, the Russians are going to lose, you know, all this shit. And it was all, it was, it was a, all part of a big plan, uh, which these neocons have said forever, that their vision was always that, like essentially what Gideon Rose said, that you steal Robin away from Batman. That with yeah. Ukraine, Russia is a European power, but without Ukraine, they're an isolated, you know, like an, an isolated nation. And Vladimir Putin was always pretty damn clear that Ukraine was his red line. Our own CIA director, we, I read the memo last time we were here, the Nyet means Nyet memo. Our own CIA director wrote back to Condoleezza Rice when she was Secretary of State and told her and said, this is his red line. Don't fuck with Ukraine. Don't try. He's like, this is, we have our only warm water port here. We have strategic interests here and we cannot have your military alliance on our border in this, in this border. Um, and that he's made this is the brightest of all red lines and 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 the CIA director current when he was the ambassador to Russia He said this is the brightest of all red lines not just for Vladimir Putin But for the entire Russian political establishment even his sharpest liberal critics agree with him on this that Ukraine is the red line 